And as Judiciary Committee Chairperson, uh, Lindsey Graham, will be holding up the gravel. He joins us right now uh, with what we can expect today. Senator, you kind of previewed it with Maria a little bit, but in terms of the format, you know that Democrats have been meeting, trying to coordinate an attack plan behind the scenes. How do you think that's going to play a role in what should be a traditional opening? Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, if they want to disrupt the opening, they, they can. But uh, come Thursday, the, October the 22nd, we're going to vote her out of committee. What we do between now and then is up to them. I hope we have a respectful hearing. I hope we give 10-minute openings and we hear from the judge today the way we've done it uh, for the last 15 or 20 times. But it's up to them. I'll be surprised if it gets too disruptive. They think they're leading in a presidential election, Kavanaugh blew up in their face. I think they're smart enough to know that if they play any dirty tricks, it, it will not help them in their overall cause, but time will tell. Senator, uh, as we look at the uh, meeting room there in the Hart Senate building, uh, where you will be very shortly, um, we know that they've taken out a tape measure and everybody's at least six feet, the chairs are <laughs> at least six feet apart. And there we can see Amy Coney Barrett actually in the uh, office building right now that you are sitting in. She will right. be taking the stage in about a half an hour. Uh, behind her desk, it looks like there are a number of chairs and they are not socially distanced. So I would imagine that those are going to be people who are in the same bubble. Are you expecting her children and family to be behind her? Yes, I hope so. This is the biggest day in her life. Uh, she's worked all her life, <clears throat> excuse me, for this moment. Wouldn't you want to share it with your family? So there are people going to work right now all over America. We've taken, we've taken great pains to make sure this committee room is safe. The architect of the Capitol, consulting with a physician for the House and the Senate, has made it CDC compliant. Uh, people have positives uh, at a restaurant. You don't shut the restaurant down. Uh, if a military unit has a positive, <clears throat> you go on about your business uh, safely. We'll have a safe hearing space. The question for my Democratic friends, do you want to take advantage of the hearing or do you want to play politics? That will be up to them. But her family will be there. This is a blessed day in her life and a great day for America. Senator, what happens if uh, the senators, the Republican senators that have COVID have tested positive, are still testing positive and they can't be there for the vote next Thursday? Well, uh, I think we're good to go with them. I just talked to both of them not long ago. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Uh, you can participate virtually in the hearing itself. I do need the Republicans present uh, this coming Thursday. I see no problem with that. And uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But so far, so good. Again, the COVID is real. It's dangerous. Take no. it seriously. But I can't stress enough to you. There are cops going to work. There's waitresses going to work. There are nurses going to work. We need to go right. to work. The United States Senate Judiciary Committee is going there to goes work her family. to do its most important work to confirm mm -hmm. a judge to the U.S. Supreme Court. Nothing more important for us. Well, we answered one question. Will her family be there? Uh, they're making their way into the into the room now. We just saw them march right past <laughs> yeah. where you were talking, Senator. So uh, a couple of things. Uh, you know, the American Bar Association says she's uh, qualified, but Chuck Schumer doesn't want her. Uh, he especially does not want her, and if she does get on the court, uh, playing a role in the future of the ACA. He said this yesterday, quote, this is the number one issue that the American people care about, and it is at direct stake with the Supreme Court nominee, given her past statements, given the balance of the court. Early on, I got together with Pelosi and Biden, and that's what we said. We're going to focus on that the whole time. They want her to recuse herself should she get on, and that's going to come up, I think, November 11th. Well, she has no legal conflict here. This is a political desire of Chuck Schumer. There's a difference between what he would like to happen politically and what the law requires. If it were up to, uh, you know, Chuck Schumer, uh, he's the one that changed the rules to begin with. He's the guy that's going to pack the court if we lose the House, the Senate, and the White House. Chuck Schumer has done a lot of damage to the judiciary by wanting to make it liberal. If they do go through with expanding the court, then you destroy an independent branch of the government. A lot's at stake in this election. Another thing's at stake, if Republicans hold the Senate, guys, I'll be the budget chairman. If Democrats take over the Senate, the budget chairman will be Bernie Sanders. Oh, my goodness. LindseyGraham.com, help me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> help yourself by helping me. Right. Me, budget chairman, Bernie, budget chairman. You figure this out for yourself. Well, the way you put it right there, a lot of people are going, okay. <laughs> um, you know, as we look, uh, apparently the family's going to be walking past that camera location right there.
Um, Joe Biden has been asked a number of times over the last week or 10 days, Senator, about whether or not if he were president, he would push to pack the courts. Well, now because he's taken heat, uh, because he would not say, now he's saying essentially that you are packing the courts by having this hearing today, and he says it's unconstitutional. Watch this. The only court packing going on right now, it's going on with Republicans packing the court now. It's not constitutional what they're doing. The fact is that the only packing going on is this court is being packed now by the Republicans after the vote has already begun. I'm going to stay focused on it so we don't take our eyes off the ball. Okay, so he says you're packing the court by having this hearing today, <laughs> yeah. and she could be confirmed. But what's he talking about that it's unconstitutional? We can't figure that part out. It's kind of like the, the Pledge of Allegiance. Anything he recites is hard to follow. Uh, constitutionally, the president has the ability until his last day in office to fill vacancies. Justice Gin Ginsburg said, Joe, look at her quote, you get elected for four years, not three. So constitutionally, the president is acting within the power given to him by the Constitution. We've had 20 people nominated in election years. 17 of them, I think, uh, made it to the court. She's going to make it. There's nothing unconstitutional. But what they're talking about is expanding the court. We're not packing the court. We're making it nine. It's been nine for over 140 years. They're talking about expanding the number to make it liberal. They will literally change America as we know it. They will expand the number of the Supreme Court. They will abolish the Electoral College, which means Ainsley, South Carolina doesn't matter anymore. Uh, New York and California picked the president. They're going to make D.C. a state. Uh, they're going to, it's going to be a parade of horribles if we lose the House, the Senate, and the White House. They're going to change this country so you won't recognize it anymore. I know um, you are, South Carolina is very proud of you and being from South Carolina, but I remember during the Kavanaugh hearing <laughs> when you said what you said about destroying his life and how you voted for Soto, Sonia Sotomayor and Kagan and you yeah. expected the same respect. You were a superstar in South Carolina and all over the country for Republicans. They loved that you stood up for him. Do you have anything planned if it goes, if it goes that way, if they start attacking her own family and faith? To stand up for her, there's a constitutional prohibition uh, against using one's religion to deny you a chance to serve your government. <clears throat> there's a constitutional provision <clears throat> prohibiting a, uh, a uh, religious test. Kavanaugh, I stood up for him. People listened because I voted for Sotomayor and Kagan. I don't know what they're going to do, but I know this. Right. Uh, my opponent raised $57 million because I stood up for Kavanaugh. Liberals hate my guts. I've been a friend of Trump. No worse sin in the liberal world than to try to help Trump. They're trying to buy South Carolina. Uh, LindsayGraham.com helped me fight back. I'm going to stand up for her. I hope people will stand up for me. We're going to keep the House. Uh, we're going to try to take back the House, keep the Senate, and get President Trump reelected. I think this helps President Trump. Right. He is shaping the court in a way good for your business, good for your family. And Amy Barrett is worth fighting for. If you want to fight over Amy Barrett, you'll get one. Jamie uh, Harrison is your opponent, and I, do, I had to look to find out what party he was in. He does not want to admit he's a Democrat. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Uh, because liberal Democrats uh, are not going to win in South Carolina. We like conservative people. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. Your ideology does matter. There's two things going on in this race. It's payback for Kavanaugh when I derailed their plans to destroy his life to keep the seat open. Uh, and it's punishment for helping Trump. Most of the money, 90-something percent, is coming from out of the state. Every liberal in the country wants to take me out. He hasn't run one ad admitting he's a Democrat. He says it's not really about Republican and Democrat. Well, it really is. If we lose the Senate, Bernie Sanders writes the nation's budget and avows socialist. If we keep the Senate, I'm the budget chairman. He's very liberal. He's the associate chairman of the National Democratic Party on their, pay on their payroll. He was the former party chairman of South Carolina. Do you, do, do you believe for one minute he doesn't buy into their agenda of uh, changing the number right. on the court, making D.C. a state, abolishing the Electoral College? Yeah, it goes on and on and on. He's with them. 
57 million is an all-time record for a Senate race. All-time <laughs> yeah, record. Right. Beat Beto O'Rourke's <laughs> all-time record. He had 36 million. <laughs> right. That's uh, it's nice to be. Uh, it's nice to be, get some attention, Senator. Right. <laughs> Right. They're trying to buy South Carolina. Ainsley's from South Carolina. Our state is not for sale. There's no amount of money you can print to convince South Carolinians to buy in to the most radical agenda the Democratic Party's pushed in the history of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. AOC endorsed him last week. The Green New Deal, Medicare for All, expanding the Supreme Court, uh, abolishing the Electoral College, making D.C. a state. All of these things are terrible for South Carolina, terrible for the country. This is there's not enough money to flip this state. I do need to fight back. I need to be able to explain to people the differences. LindsayGraham.com. If you want to help me, uh, help me by going to my website. Uh, do you have another show coming up in 20 yeah. minutes? So we got to let got you a go. Place to go. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to go. Go head over to room number go. 216 in the Hart Senate Office Building. Thank you so much for joining us, especially this close to the hearing. And we did, we did ask your opponent to come on, and we have not heard back. We would love to have him on the show. Steve, check the voicemail. We can't get? afford. He can't afford. He can't afford no. it. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Mr. Graham. Thanks, Good sir. luck. You're going to be on all the channels in 19 minutes. Yes.